first let's talk about a little bit the discretionary periods that, that you hear that word. Uh, the NCAA requires from January 1 until the time you start your summer workouts to have eight weeks of discretionary. Um, there's some of those weeks that just really, really fit and make a lot of sense, like you know, two weeks after the, the bowl game, um, the week of spring break, the two weeks between spring and summer semester, um, all those weeks, the week after spring practice to let their bodies heal up, th those really make sense. Uh, but that's only six, and then you got to find two other weeks in there. And so really where we're at right now is the, in the discretionary period. We did a discretionary for the uh, finals week and then the two weeks here between spring and summer semester. And we'll start uh, summer workouts on May 31st. Um, and that discretionary period basically is this, is that we cannot punish a reward based on attendance. And so it's basically on the athlete. Now the NCAA would would tell you that it's not that the athlete can't train, can't work out, they can, and we can coach them. Uh, we just cannot make it mandatory that, that they be there. Um, when you tell an 18, 19 year old that it's discretionary, first word that comes in their mind is vacation. And uh, so what we've tried to do is really educate our athletes on how important handling that discretionary time is. Do they need some time off? No question. The body needs to heal up, their minds need to get refreshed, all that's so important. But uh, an interesting study that I read showed that an Olympic athlete, after training for the Olympics, competed in the Olympics, took four weeks off after the Olympics. It took him 22 weeks to get back to where he was after a four-week break. So that, I'm not saying that every individual's body responds the same, but I do know that there's a compounding effect. The more time you take off, the longer it's going to take you to get back to where you once were. And so as we test in March, right before we go on spring break, that's a huge testing time for us. When we leave for the summer, we want to obviously be back and healed up from spring practice and have our strength levels back to where they were in March when we tested. And then when they come back from that discretionary time, we want them to hold that strength so that we can build on that platform in the month of June and the month of July. Uh, talk a little bit about the summer. The summer will go, uh, like I said, May 31st, we'll train for four weeks. We'll give them four or five days off that, that runs into the 4th of July, give them a little time. Uh, to get out of town and, and to get with family. Then we'll start back up, go four hard weeks, and then give them four or five days off right before camp. Uh, one of the things that, as a strength coach, I've been with Coach Nut now for 14 years, that I get asked a lot is, you know, the success that y'all have had late in the season, in the month of November, and the success that y'all have had in terms of overtime games, you know, what do you attribute that to? Uh, usually they're looking for an answer that says, you know, there's certain conditioning drills that we do, there's certain ways that we physically train the guys, and, and, and there are some of those things that go into play, but really the, the ultimate factor in that has been how Coach Nutt has handled the summer, camp, and then throughout practice. Uh, in the summer when we give them those breaks, there's really only one week that's, that's mandated that you got to give them off uh, during that summertime. We, we end up giving them middle of the summer, a few days, and at the end of the summer before they go into camp because we want them fresh coming into camp. We don't want them burnt out. Um, and then how Coach Nut handles camp is just so amazing because uh, we don't really actually do two-a-days, if you will. We'll have a walk-through in the morning, and then we'll have a practice in the afternoon. Uh, he's not into seeing how many IVs we can, uh, we can have uh, and just beating them down. And so we come out of camp extremely fresh, extremely healthy. Um, and then how he handles practice throughout the course of the season, um, a lot goes into his decisions and how he treats the team that really, really play, pays big dividends uh, in, at the end of the season and, and in those overtime games. Um, as far as where our team's at right now, uh, I feel really, really good. I feel like they're, they're, they've matured. Uh, they obviously want to get that bad taste out of their mouth for that 4-8 and eight season. Um, it's time to get back to, to what we're accustomed to. In the 14 years I've been with Coach, we've only had three seasons uh, that ended without going to a postseason or a bowl game. And um, so we're ready to get back to the standards that, that we've been accustomed to. Um, now you want to talk about uh, success in overtime? Well, I kind of hit that with the way. Okay, you did. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah that was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I thought that was awesome. And, <laughs> yeah, you, so you, put, you got so much information in five minutes. That was, <laughs> that was awesome. I think that's all we need. Um, yeah, that's all we need. Uh, so hey, where, do you, where is your and uh, Stacey?